Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about Let's Encrypt. And what is Let's Encrypt? Well, on the internet today you should really use secure HTTP wherever you can find it. So HTTP is this hypertext transfer protocol that we all use every day. And every time you visit a site, look at some homepage, you are going to an HTTP address. And HTTPS says that you are using an SSL connection. So that is a secure connection. And before you had to go to a registrar or a certificate provider and buy a certificate to ensure that you own this domain. And that's still a good thing to do because you, if you pay a little bit and say that this is my domain and they verify this, then you can get, for instance, a green mark uh, that this domain is secure and that will look good for your customers. So if you are doing online business, it's still valid to do this. Uh, in my case, I wanted to build a feature, a login feature that requires that you run over SSL. So I wanted to give my WordPress um, site SSL connection so I could do HTTPS to my WordPress site. And I used Let's Encrypt and it's pretty easy to set up on your server. If you are a server administrator or if you buy a node on Amazon, for instance, or in my case, Linode, uh, you will have access to SSL or SSH. So you can go into this server on the command line and run a few commands and get this up and running. So we're going to go through these commands today. I'm not going to show you how to write them in because my cat actually <laughs> bit my hand. So I'm not that fast with this hand. It should look something like this. And um, so I'm going to go through a couple of slides where I've typed down what you need to do in order to get Let's Encrypt. So first off uh, on uh, the first slide here, we need to go and get the Git repository. So if you have a server it, and it's a standard server, it's usually either a Red Hat version and then it can be a CentOS or a Fedora. There are different flavors of Red Hat and they use an RPM package manager. Or you can use a Debian, Cento, uh, Debian, Ubuntu and so on. And uh, these are using apt to get your packages. Should work fine with the uh, Gento and the Emerge Packet Manager there. Um, and, and there are a lot of different package managers. But if you can some way install Git, this uh, um, repository handling tool that uh, Linux Torvalds uh, implemented, um, if you have that on the system, in the, this case I show for a Debian ser uh, server, I run apt-get install git. Uh, and after that, you can run git clone and the repository from GitHub, Let's Encrypt, and it's called Let's Encrypt. So it's on their GitHub page. You clone that down. I chose to put it in opt uh, Let's Encrypt, so optional packages. Uh, it's a very common way to install on Linux system that you use the opt directory. Uh, and when we have this tooling downloaded and set up on your Linux system, the next step is to create your certificate. So they have created scripts for you to get it up and running only by running a few commands. And I run sudo for all these because I need to be root in order to enable some of these features. So we run sudo, let's encrypt auto, and we want certificate only. We want it to be standalone. We want it for uh, domain example.com and domain vvvexample.com. And this will create or open up port 80 and will talk with the Let's Encrypt server and they will verify that the domain you have had said that this server is running on is actually 
pointing to this server. And in order to do that, you will probably go into uh, the server and set that this domain is a valid name for this server. In Linode, you do that in their administrative tools, or you can uh, go into the host file on the machine and set that this is named a specific name. And when you have given the server a name, you need to buy that domain and point it to that server. And usually when it comes to Linode, for instance, they had five name servers and you just had to supply those name servers to um, my uh, domain registrar and they would po point my domain to Linode. So when you know that your uh, domain is actually pointing to your server, that's an important part here, then you can run this command. And when you run standalone, it will open eight, uh, port 80, so it will run a specific uh, web server in order to get it running. But you might think that, well, I'm already running an Apache or an Nginx server. Well, you can do that as well. You only change the standalone parameter to Apache, for instance, and it will find your Apache installation and add a little... A script or a, a little file that it can look for uh, in order to verify that you have this, that domain. The same goes for Nginx, you only supply that as a parameter and it will put the file in that home directory so it can actually look that file up and see that you have a valid uh, domain or a valid claim to this domain. So this is a very fast and easy way to get a certificate uh, when you run this, it will ask you a few questions. It will ask you if you want to agree to the terms and services of Let's, Let's Encrypt. You should read those and see that you actually are okay with those terms and services. There are not, nothing strange in them. I have read through them. Uh, but it's still a good thing for you to take that decision. You can also shows, choose to share your email with EFF and you can also donate to them uh, if you want uh, them to do <laughs> more work like this. Uh, they are a f an organization that works for, um, for the internet. So it's a, a good uh, cause in my book. But you, my, your <laughs> opinions might differ. If everything is okay, you will get a message that says, congratulations, your certificate and chain has been saved too. And then uh, some place you, where you have your PEM file and then you have the private keys somewhere. So these are the two files that have been created. You have a full chain and a private key. And those are required to use in order to uh, set up your domain later on. So if you know how to set up a patch, you can provide these in a patch. You can also find guides online how to set up a patch or Nginx with SSL and just copy these uh, paths in there. Uh, there is actually a private key and a cert.pem that you can use for a certificate. So in Apache, I, for instance, said that this is my cert.pem and then they have a chain.pem, which is everything from the certificate authority uh, and that I put as a separate variable in my setup and then the private key. So it all depends on which web server you are hosting your material on for uh, the setup. And that's not something I will cover in this video. I'm gonna just talk about Let's Encrypt. So we have created these keys. And next up, we will run this uh, certbot auto certificate and see how the certificates looks. Here you see that my certificate is valid for the next 89 days. And we have example.com and vvexample.com. So that's a good way to verify how long you can use your uh, certificate and what kind of certificate you got and for which domains. And if this looks good, then you have a good certificate. So the last thing that you need to do in order to get this running and be 
sure that you have a valid certificate for a long time to go is adding a string to your cron tab. And this cron tab scream, uh, string here says that actually every first of every month you should run this script. So this is what 001 star star here says. And the script is let's encrypt auto renew. So every first of every month you will renew, run the renew command and it will talk to the let's encrypt servers and try to renew your certificate. And of course, if you have not used the command uh, that we talked about earlier, if you use the standalone and then set up a patch, for instance, or you, uh, you stand alone and set up Nginx or some other web server, this will not work for you. But in my case, I use a patch and I set it up like adding the command a patch. And that means that it's configured to add more information to a patch and do the check through my patch server and that it will makes it able to renew my certificate every first of every month so i will have a certificate that renews and is reusable for time to come and uh, this is what i wanted to cover today with let's encrypt uh, i think it's pretty straightforward to use this and set it up uh, the hard part later on might be to configure our patch, uh, but that is something that is good to actually uh, look into further and learn about uh, because there is a lot of things you can configure in your web server and making the effort to actually understand your web server and configure it correctly will secure it for the future. Um, there are some uh, commands or some GUI tools that can actually help you out to get a secure uh, web server. And if you are not inclined to know anything about this or handle this, then find a hosting provider that will give you an SSL secure HTTP server without you doing anything. So you don't need to do this configuration. There is a lot of hosting providers that will help you out with that as well. I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions about Let's Encrypt or anything else, please leave them down in the comment section. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.